everyone, I'm Melissa Farley with azcentral.com and I am here with our theater critic, Carrie Langle, and we're here to talk about Hamilton the Musical, which is uh, going to be at ASU Gamage January 31st through February 25th. January 30th. January 30th. Tonight. Tonight is opening night. Um, and so we wanted to have a little bit of a discussion about why is this such a big deal? Like, why is this such a huge musical, Carrie? Well, for starters, it's just one of the very few musicals that crosses over into the mainstream pop, pop culture consciousness, like Phantom of the Opera or Rent. Um, there just really aren't a lot of them that do that, particularly lately. I mean, 50 years ago, Broadway was at the center of culture, but now it's a little less so. Um, the other thing, though, is that it is a really important piece of theater in the theater world for a number of reasons, but the number one is, is this question of diversity. So Hamilton is a musical that tells the story of the Founding Fathers with a cast of mostly people of color. Um, it's not a case of blind casting, um, it's, it's color conscious casting, and it's really central to the idea of the show. So usually there's only basically one white guy um, on the stage in Hamilton, and it's the person who plays the King of England. So that represents the old world um, and old ways of thinking. And so using hip hop music and a cast of people of color is sort of a metaphor to get at the idea that these founding fathers were actually young people uh, in a revolutionary frame of mind who were bucking the system. How do you think the public why do you think they latched on to this particular musical so strongly? Well, I was super skeptical um, because, so I interviewed Lin-Manuel Miranda, the creator of the show, almost 10 years ago when he was coming to town to perform in his previous musical, In the Heights. Um, and when I asked him the obligatory question, what's next, he said he was working on a hip hop concept album mm -hmm. about the life of Alexander Hamilton. And I gotta say, I did not think, Wow, that is going to be the <laughs> biggest Broadway hit in forever. That's it, that's the thing, yeah. <laughs> um, it definitely is an unlikely formula, um, particularly with the historical thing. That's just not something that usually resonates. Um, but it has everything to do with the music that he wrote. It's incredibly exciting. Now, I know you mentioned interviewing him a long time ago, and he first performed this, a, a piece of the Hamilton mixtape at the White House in 2009. So, I mean, this has been a long process to get to where it is now. Is that normal for musicals to take this long to come into fruition? Well, Hamilton took a little longer than average, but musicals do take a very long time to develop. Um, from the very first writing stages and workshopping, and th that can be you know, easily three to four years at the beginning, so um, it, it's certainly not the only musical that took that long to bring to the stage. I saw that it's won like 11 Tony Awards, a Pulitzer Prize, you know, all these different awards. Um, how does that compare to some of the other really significant significant musicals um, of our time, like you know, Fiddler on the Roof or Les Mis? I mean, do they get as much, you know, of the awards like? So Hamilton holds the record for most Tony nominations at 16. 16. Yeah. Um, the 11 wins loses to the producers, which won 12 Tony Awards. Of course, the producers did not win a Pulitzer Prize. Um, however, Hamilton is also not unprecedented in winning the Pulitzer Prize for drama. Uh, it is the ninth musical to do so. Other ones include A Chorus Line, South Pacific, How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying, and Rent. And Rent might be the best comparison. It didn't win as many Tonys, it only won four. But in terms of being a groundbreaking musical that really changed Broadway and really hit the public consciousness, you know, that was probably the last time something like this happened. So do you think this is one of those musicals that's gonna stand the test of time? Absolutely. Um, and that's because it, it, it is, there's nothing about it that's a gimmick. So hip hop on Broadway is unusual. It's not something that happens a lot. I think it might be something that happens a lot more in the future because it is uh, a musical language that has become mainstream and broad all across the culture. Um, but the thing about the show is that it's just really, really good. It's incredibly well written, incredibly well crafted, and that goes to the staging as well. The costumes are fantastic. They're a mix of period influences with modern sensibility, which you know, of course fits the story and the music itself. Um, and 
the staging is super well done. Like Les Mis, it uses a turntable, um, which is done really well, particularly in the dual scenes. Mm. Um, but the thing is, the choreography's great, the dancing's great, everything about it is super well done, but none of it's showy. It's not a spectacle. All of it is in service of the storytelling, and that's what makes it a great piece of art as well as a great piece of entertainment. Carrie's gonna write a full review of Hamilton at Gamage, and you can find that on azcentral.com in the things to do section. We've also got a ton of other Hamilton stories that we've um, put out over the last, uh, I don't know, what year or so, I would say. Um, so make sure you check AZ Central Things to Do for all of our Hamilton coverage. Melissa Farley, Carrie Langle, we'll see you at the show.